Week 13 of the Favorite 15 series. It's great to be with you studying out the 15 most popular verses in the Bible. Each week has been an all-star verse packed with so much wonderful things to see as we spend time together in God's Word. We're near the end of the series, and for this week, we have a wonderful verse written by the disciple who would take care of Jesus' mother after the crucifixion, John. John writes, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. Jesus in this moment has drawn a line in the sand for all of humanity. This isn't the only place in scripture that reveals that without Christ, we are hopeless and helpless to make it to heaven. Even Old Testament saints knew that none of them could ascend God's holy mountain. David wrote in Psalm 24 verses three through five, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? He'll go on to describe that if you live a perfect life all the time, then you wouldn't need a savior. Paul would tell the Romans in Romans 3.23, we all fall short of the glory of God. So David in Psalm 24 prophesies so that we might be ready to receive the savior. And in Psalm 24, verses 7 through 10, he says, Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. So when Jesus says that he is the way, the only way to God the Father, he is telling us that there is no other way for us to get to heaven except through faith in Jesus alone. Heaven will not be filled with a variety of people from all different kinds of religions. If this was the case, then Jesus died for nothing. If I could simply follow the teachings of Buddha or Muhammad or L. Ron Hubbard, if I could follow the teachings of anyone, uh, Dr. Seuss, and make it to heaven, then Jesus leaving the comforts of heaven willingly going to the cross to take on the sins of the world would have had no purpose. I want to read a sample from my book that's set to be released next month called Following the Footsteps of Jesus, An Epic Expedition Through the Holy Land, and give you a little sneak peek, which in the book I write about why Jesus would refer to himself as the way, the truth, and the life and what those who heard his words would have immediately understood that we might not. In John chapter 2, verses 19 through 21, Jesus says, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But the text explains that Jesus was speaking about the temple of his body. Jesus' death and resurrection would replace the physical temple in Jerusalem as the central place of worship and connection with God. By declaring himself as the way and the truth and the life, Jesus is referring to himself as the new temple, John 14:6. The gate of the temple was referred to as the way. The gate led into the outer court from the outside. It was the first threshold that was crossed, and it separated the sinner on the outside from all within. The gate served as the access point for the priest and the people to enter the outer courtyard where various rituals and sacrifices took place. The door of the tabernacle was referred to as the truth. 
The door led from the outer court to the holy place. It separated the one who had made the sacrifice from worship. The priest, having made the proper offering, must pass through the door of the tabernacle if he would worship God. So today, God is worshiped in truth through Christ. The veil was referred to as the life. The veil separated the Holy of Holies from the holy place. A person who enters by faith in Christ into the holy place today is in the Holy of Holies. True worship now brings a worshiper into the very presence of God. The old covenant sanctuary was going to be superseded by a new temple, even Jesus himself, in whom his people are being knit together as a true sanctuary for God. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. This truth that we needed a Savior, a sinless sacrifice for our sins, this was foreshadowed in the Old Testament and the temple sacrificial system for sin as a blemish-free lamb would be sacrificed for our sins. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, the remission of sin is not possible. Hebrews 9.22 Through faith in Christ, our sins have been removed. We have been given His righteousness which makes us pure and holy, and it makes us able to enter into heaven. The reason is that we have been clothed in robes of his righteousness. We have allowed the king of glory to give us his life. This might sound like this is what is being taught at every Christian church across the world, but unfortunately it's not. I wanna read to you an article, a fairly recent article, in the Christian Post, written on October 6, 2017. And the article, if you want to re- uh, reference it, research it yourself later, is titled, Christianity is not the only way to heaven, prominent Presbyterian pastor says. Leader of the second largest congregation in the Presbyterian Church USA, their pastor, Reverend Shannon Johnson Kirshner, has declared that Christianity is not the only way to heaven. Kirshner, 45, who leads the 5,500-member 4th Presbyterian Church in Chicago, Illinois, expressed her belief in a podcast with the Chicago Sun-Times. After she was asked the question, Is Christianity the only way to heaven? No, Kirshner replied bluntly. The second largest Presbyterian church one attended and supported by 5,500 people does not believe nor teach the words of Jesus from John 14, 6. Now, she's not an outlier in the world that we live. Among Christian pastors, a survey was done where 45% of Presbyterian churches of the United States of America strongly disagree or disagree that only followers of Jesus Christ can be saved. Not only did Jesus say that he was the only way, this was clearly taught in the early church. Let's consider Acts chapter 4 verse 12 where Peter said of Jesus, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So, why would this pastor come to the conclusion that she thinks that Jesus lied in John 14, 6? There's no other uh, conclusion that we can draw from her response. Which, by the way, if that were true, if Jesus lied about being the only way to the Father, that would make Jesus a sinner And that would disqualify him from saving us from our sins. So I don't understand that at all. You you can't have it halfway. You can't say, well, Jesus lied in this moment, but he still could be a way to get to God in heaven. No, he would be disqualified if he lied. In fact, if Jesus lied, he would need a Savior. 
Now, the reason Pastor Shannon Johnson Kirshner came to the conclusion, I'm not going to speculate on this. I'm going to quote her directly from the article. She said she doesn't think that she doesn't think the God she knows from the Bible will be sending anyone there. She's referring to hell to hell. She doesn't think that the God of the Bible would send anybody to hell. Now, John 14, 6 is an important verse because it brings clarity to the confusion that exists in the world. When Jesus says in John 14, 6 that he is the truth, I want you to know the truth is not a man-made construct, but it is defined by the one who is truth personified. Both grace and truth are fully realized in Jesus, John 1, 17. If we are to stand against the enemy's lies, lies that are even propagated by people like Reverend Shannon uh, Kirshner, Johnson Kirshner, we need to be girded or encircled with the belt of truth, Ephesians 6, 14. In Luke chapter 17, verses 26 through 27, Jesus said, as it, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. Now, in a sermon a little while back, I already addressed this lie that God sends people to hell. God doesn't send people to hell. And you say, well, hold on, Pastor Matt. I thought that you just said that Jesus is the only way to God the Father in heaven. Yes, that is true. Does God send people to hell? No, he doesn't. And let me explain. You see, that pastor, she missed the whole reason that Jesus came. God didn't and God doesn't send anyone to hell. He warned Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree that would bring death. And then in Genesis 3.10, after Adam and Eve sinned, and he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So what then did God do for Adam and Eve who had sinned, who had brought death and the curse of sin upon the whole earth? And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them, Genesis 3, 21. An animal was sacrificed to cover their sin. Why? Because this was foreshadowing Jesus' sacrifice for their sin and for our sin to come. The sacrifice needed to remove our sin. You see, God doesn't send anyone to hell. We brought sin into the world. But God made a provision for our sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Peter would say that God wishes that none would perish, but everyone to come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, 9. But here's the thing. This is, this is how we reconcile how not everybody goes to heaven. And this one pastor struggled with, oh, I don't think God would send people to hell, so therefore there must be many paths to, to God. No, that's not the case. Here's the thing. God is love, 1 John 4, 8. And always use scripture to back it up. Don't just go with one pastor's uh, opinion on something or shocking statement they made. Always go back to the word of God. Back everything up with the word of God. It's true, and this truth is, is, is unchanging from the time it was written to the end of the age. It will stand you see, God is love, so because God is love, he can't force a decision on anyone. Because if he did that, that would not be love. He gives us free will to choose the provision that he has made for us to remove our sins and to give us everlasting life, or to reject the atonement for our sins and make the decision to stay on the path that leads to hell. You see, the decision is up to each one of us. God doesn't send anybody to hell. He leaves the decision up to you. He's given us the provision in Christ to choose life, to cross over from death to life. But many reject the grace given to us through the sacrifice of his son. 
So Jesus is clear. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus also said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Jesus calls this pastor that I referenced earlier and anyone like them a thief and a robber. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, those were the religious leaders in the day, still applies to the religious leaders today that um, are deceiving people. Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, that's Christ, he identified himself as the door or the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber, John 10, 1. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. You see, the 5,500 people who are listening to this pastor, supporting their teaching, do not belong to the flock of Jesus, because very clearly, Jesus says the sheep do not listen to the thieves and the robbers, those claiming that there are many ways that you can enter into the sheep pen and be saved. You see, we have not listened to them. We know it's not true. Because instead of listening to anyone who says that there are many ways to get to heaven, we have listened to the voice of our good shepherd who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus will go on to say, which will explain why this pastor does not believe in Jesus' words. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. John chapter 10, verses 26 through 28. You see, the more of God's truth that you know, the more the truth will set you free from erroneous beliefs that are not based on his word. You see, this isn't Pastor Matt's opinion. I'm sh clearly showing and teaching from the very words of Jesus Christ. The devil, he would love for you to stay away from the Bible because it is the book of your inheritance. And it tells you what belongs to you through the blood of Jesus Christ. The devil, he would love for all of us not to find out the truth so that he can keep us in bondage, sickness, and poverty. Distortions and lies about God lead us away from him and ultimately into the depths of despair and fear. But the more time that we spend in God's word, we'll see Jesus as our answer to every problem. Our freedom and our victory are found in him. He is our security, our righteousness, our all in all. And I am just blessed by how many people over the life of Acts 433 Church have let us know how God has done miracles in their life how they have received the peace of God as they spent time with us in God's word. And it's nothing more than the simple fact that this is what God's word brings to us. So whether it's Acts 433 Church or any other church that teaches the word of God, I encourage you to spend a lot of time in it yourself with other believers, listening to messages online, filling your heart and your life with the word of God. So one of the things I was thinking about when I was putting together this message on John 14, 6 is from the verse in Philippians. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. We know the way to heaven. We know and believe Jesus is the way. And so we can show people the way. Imagine a stranger approaches you in your hometown and they need to find a particular restaurant. 
They're relieved that they've actually found someone who's a local. I've listened to a bunch of outsiders, people who have told me to take this route or take that route, and I've never come upon this restaurant that I've been searching for. I've taken one path and then another, but I can't seem to find the way. Could you give me directions? Sure, I'd be glad to help. You are a local, you are a citizen of heaven. You have discovered the path to life. And as Christ followers, we have the light of the world. And so when people are stumbling around in darkness, we can let the light of Christ illuminate the path to life for them. And we have the Holy Spirit that gives us the words to speak. We're not in spiritual darkness. We have been given the glorious mission to show people the way to everlasting life. What I love about people who have recently become a believer is the joy and the eagerness and the simplistic approach they have to introducing other people that they love to the way. They don't have all the Bible knowledge, but they have discovered that Jesus is the path to everlasting life and they want to tell everyone the good news. Think about what it means to be citizens of heaven who are living right now on earth. Think about the opportunities that you have to help those who are lost to find the good shepherd. My desire is that I could sit down with that pastor, that, that I could show them the path to everlasting life because you know, they have 5,500 people that they influence every week, and they're leading them down a path of destruction. I wish I had an opportunity to spend some time and just reveal the truth of God's word to this person who's struggling. At least they were honest in the interview with where they're at. And so maybe we should spend some time praying for them. In fact, that article was dated 2017 or 2018, I can't remember. They may not even be the pastor of that church anymore, I'm not sure. But I truly desire that they would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And uh, that's my desire for everybody. And it gives me great joy whenever I've been a part of it. And it's nothing to do about me. And that's the beautiful thing. It's what the Holy Spirit does. He opens the eyes of the blind to see Jesus for who he is. We get to be vessels of his grace. And we get to see the joy of a life realizing Jesus as their Savior. So as we conclude this message in John 14, 6, I want to pray for that pastor. But I also want to pray for some people in your life that are near and dear to you. that Maybe they don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That you would be given an opportunity and others too would come alongside their path and really illuminate the light of Christ to them. All right, would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you that your word is very clear that the only way that any of us will ever go to heaven is because we have received by faith the sacrifice that Jesus made to remove our sins, to give us his righteousness. And that is amazing grace. And so when we get to heaven, it's not because of the long list of good deeds we've done. Of course, you will bear forth amazing fruit in our lives and we will be a part of some grand things here on earth, some good things are helping people. But the only way that we're qualified for heaven is because we have received the sacrifice Jesus made on our behalf. And that's great news because nobody is disqualified from salvation. And uh, Lord, I, th I think about this pastor that has a weekly audience of 5,500 people and they are leading them down a, a path of destruction. Lord, I pray, and whether it's me or somebody else, it doesn't matter. I just pray for an opportunity for them to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, to believe the words that he spoke in John 14:6. I also pray for our online audience and their family members or friends that they love that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I pray that this week opportunities will present themselves to let the 
light of Christ shine brightly into their life, that the Holy Spirit would open their eyes to see the beauty of Christ, their need for a Savior, that they would receive Christ, sacrifice for them, and be saved. Uh, Lord, I pray that you also bring other people along their path too, to just encourage them and support them along the way and so that they may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I thank you for this opportunity to preach this message today, bringing clarity. There's not many paths to heaven. There's only one path. God so loved the world. He didn't want any of us to perish. So he sent his son to die in our place. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the good news we carry with us in the world. So we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.